What's up YouTube? It's Deanna from Windy City Vape Reviews and today I will be doing a review of the brand new IPV5. I got the red one and I did get this um, from eSigCity.com for $49.99. I will put their information in the description below. And uh, let me give you a little bit of information on it before we dive down and take a close up and personal look. So the IPv5 has the latest Yihi SX330-200 smart chip. It goes from 10 to 200 watts. It has a voltage range of 1 to 7 volts. And the joules go from 10 to 100 joules. Or if you're in titanium mode, it will go up to 120 joules. Uh, temperature range is 100 to 300 degrees Celsius or 212 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. It supports canthal, nickel, titanium, and stainless steel. Uh, the, in the um, variable wattage mode, it can go from a 0.15 to a 3 ohm resistance. And in temp control, it can go from a 0.05 to a 1.5 ohm resistance. It has a large intuitive OLED display screen, dual 18650 batteries, upgradable firmware, low voltage protection, low resistance protection, high input voltage warning, output short circuit protection, reverse battery protection, temperature overheat protection, and visual operating system. And then what you get inside the box is the mod itself, a USB cable, a user manual, a warranty card, and um, it says one time gift box, but it's pretty much just a box. So, take it for another vape. So let's dive down, take an up close and personal look, then we'll come back up top. I'll give you my pros and my cons and let you know what I think. Okay, we are going to do an up close and personal with the IPv5. This is the box that it comes in. It did have like a shrimp shrink wrap around it, um, but I have opened it and used it obviously. And here's a list of the colors. For some reason, it says pink, not red. Um, and I have a red one, and I don't think they have a pink one. So there's a QR code, IPv5. He SX 330 200 chip. There is the bottom. This is not a toy, just so you know. Right. Oops, open it up and right on top you have a warranty card with the information. And then we have a little user manual not super in-depth um, but not bad if you would like to read it in its entirety please go ahead and pause the video it shows you power mode jewel mode or otherwise known as temp mode and then they have this uh, Pure flavor and wattage mode, it, I believe, is a tank that they are coming out with. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what that's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be like a uh, ceramic coil one or not, but there you have it. All right. And that's about it for the manual. So this is the device and let me tell you this thing is actually much heavier than I had anticipated um, which to me is not a problem because I'm used to the weight of my snow wolf so it doesn't bother me at all and in fact it is very similar in weight to the snow wolf um, really any pictures that I saw of this online does not do it justice whatsoever um, the finish is like really super nice on this um, and it, in person it's much much brighter red than it is uh, coming across on film at least on mine anyway from what it appears and from what I've seen on pictures online 
There is your 510 spring loaded center pen. Um, it is not adjustable, so do not try to adjust that with the screwdriver. It is spring loaded. Uh, this is kind of nice to help guard against scratching, um, but the problem is it's not actually 22 millimeters in diameter, so you do have a tiny bit of hangover on your um, on your tanks and your RDAs. So just to be aware that does not completely uh, protect it. So and underneath that. It's just your USB cable. This does not charge by the USB cable, which I am completely fine with. I don't recommend that anyway. Uh, so you do have to have an external battery charger to charge this. Get that out of the way. Get my batteries. Show you. Now, this is the one thing that's kind of strange about this. Um, it doesn't really have any kind of a, uh, a latch or anything. Like most of the devices I have, they have it like a little cutout or something to get into. So if you don't have nails, it may be a problem, but I can easily slip mine underneath. I have two magnets at the bottom. It has this kind of like protective, I don't know plastic or something over it and then you have a magnet at the top this is the battery sled everything is actually really clean and nice looking now these do have a ledge on them um, and the bottoms are like spring loaded so you do have to put them in bottom first and it does tell you positive and negative you don't want to mess those up Definitely need to use the ribbon on these because of that bottom edge. Uh, you won't be able to get them out. So positive up, now negative up. And it's back on. And there really is no uh, too much. I mean, there's a little battery door rattle, but... I know the earlier reviews that I had seen from some of the sample mods that came out, they were really able to shift them around, and I don't have that issue with this one whatsoever. Um, I'm going to shake it and see if you can hear any uh, rattling from the buttons. So, really no battle, bu battle, <laughs> no button rattles whatsoever. I have five clicks on. And it brings you to the IPV splash screen. And check atomizer, of course, because I don't have an atomizer. That is the USB port that is only for doing, uh, if, you, if they come out with any upgrades, that is where you would connect the USB port and connect it to your computer. Other than that, it is not used for Charging. All right, so I have my 13 Heavens 9 Hell uh, RDA on here. It's, it is a clone RDA. So, it's reading at a .19 and it uh, reads at the exact same thing on my Snow Wolf, so that's good to know. Down here in the corner, it does say Memory 1. Um, these do have different memories that you can go into. If you want to set it for, say I wanted to set it for this tank, and then I want to set it for, you know, another tank, there are five memories that you can do. I am in wattage mode, that is the voltage, and there's my battery life right there. Hit it to fire, fires right away. Um, the only thing that I have not been able to do is rotate the screen, and since I'm right-handed, it's a little sometimes aggravating, but other than that, not too bad. Um, this is the one thing that I've just, I don't know, I've had issues getting into, um, being able to change the wattage. I think I have to let the, the screen go, uh, blank first and then hit it and then memory one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 
And now I can change my wattage up or down. Now some of these did have an issue when they came out. They would not go over 75 watts. I Mine is not one of those. Um, but there is a fix out there that seems to be really simple. Um, you can find it if on Mike Vape's channel. He explains how to do it. And I did see a couple other people that have done it as well. So we're going to turn this back down to 75 and that's another thing I don't really care about. I, I like the 0.1 increments. Um, you know, when you're when you're lower down, that's fine. But I like how the Snow Wolf, once you hit 75, it will go to 0.5 increments. So it doesn't seem to take nearly as long. Nice clicky buttons, though. Uh, again, there's the fire button. And then let me uh, I'm gonna take this off. And I am going to put my... Dual crown tank on here. It does have a nickel coil in there. All right. And I don't know what it is about this tank. Um, it kind of leaks a little. I mean, it doesn't really leak leak. It just seems juice seems to come out a little bit around the. Airflow control ring, um, nothing major, nothing where it is like super annoying, but it does happen and it's kind of, I don't know why. But I've heard other people that have the black ones have that problem, but they don't seem to have the problem on the silver ones. Alright, so to get into, to change from power mode to temp control, you go one, two, three, four, five. That's for your system on, power mode, exit. That's when you want to exit. So we're going to go back to power. You can either hit the, the up or down. And it's only power and joule. So we're going to hit joule. And we want Fahrenheit. But if you wanted Celsius, you'd just hit the up or down button. Hit the menu button, or the fire button again. And I have it set at 424. We'll go 425. Enter. It is a nickel coil. And now we're going to exit. Oh, no, wait, I bounced to the wrong one, sorry. And now it shows you that is, now it's, this is reading a 0 0.18, and I want to lock that resistance, so I would hold the up and down button. Um, Usually it actually shows up what it actually is, so I'm kind of surprised that it, and then for some reason it's not letting me go anymore. Okay, so there's my temp that I set it at, 65 joules is what I kind of like to keep it at, Um, but again, this is a, one of those that if you go into the uh, setting, you can change it, make it go up or down. Um, so yeah, that's about it. It is pretty simple um, to navigate. I honestly, the screen. I wish the screen was a little bit better. It doesn't show up as nice on here as what you can see in person. It is pretty bright. Um, so it goes like super bright at times, like when you fire. So yeah, that's it, kind of for the up close and personal. And we'll take it back up top and take it for a vape and I will give you my pros and cons. All right, so that was the up close and personal look of the IPv5. Uh, now I will give you a list of some pros and some cons. Um, we'll start with the pros. The pros, I like that it's heavy. Um, to me, it just kind of like, it just, I don't know. Maybe because I'm so used to my Snow Wolf, that's why I'm used to it and it doesn't bother me, but I, I really do like that. I love the clicky buttons, um, you know, you really do have to kind of press on them to get, you know, like even to get it to fire. If you very lightly press it, it doesn't fire, so you do got to kind of have to, oh, hold on a second, I just went into the menu. <laughs> so you do have to press pretty good to uh, get it to fire. Um, the screen could be a little better. I mean, it is a decent size screen and in person it is much better looking than it is on camera. 
so yeah, I, I wish I was able to rotate the screen though because being right-handed, when I want to look at it, it's always upside down. So I got to kind of be you know, looking around all over the place. Um, not a huge deal though. Um, the color. Love, love, love the color. I've always loved red. Um, and I just thought it was like kind of, you know, hey, let's get the red one and see. But it's, it's, it's odd. It's, it is made out of aluminum, but it has this like finish on it that's it almost feels like plasticky. It's very hard to describe, and it looks like it almost has like a fleck kind of paint, like a, maybe like a pearl or gold in there. It's absolutely beautiful in person, and I wish it came across on screen as it does in person. Uh, so if you see it on, you know, even like the blue and the silver. They, when you, when I've seen pictures of them online, they, I'm like, God, that looks kind of cheap. I know, like it's made cheaply. It is not. It is definitely not. It is made extremely, extremely well. Um, I've been using it in both temperature mo control mode and in power mode, and it seems to be working fine in both of them. When I try my resistances out on my different mods, it is almost exactly reading exactly what the Snow Wolf reads it at, so that's an awesome thing. Um, it's considering there's like a $50 difference in the price of my Snow Wolf to this. Um, yeah, it, it's extremely comfortable in the hand. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see this, but there is like a slight indentation there. And it just, it's very, very comfortable in the hand. Um, my Snow Wolf is kind of boxy. I actually have it here. to show you kind of side by side what it looks like. So the Snow Wolf is definitely much, much wider. Height-wise, they're about the same. The IPB is a tiny, tiny bit taller. Um, but, and like I said, weight-wise, it's kind of hard to tell because I have a tank on this and an RDA on this. And right now the IPV5 is feeling a little heavier, but that's probably because of the crown tank that I have on there. But weight-wise, they're almost exactly identical. So if you're looking for a lightweight, dual 18650 mod this is not going to be the one for you um yeah other than that as far as pros uh you know i'm very 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 happy with this i'm really glad that i did decide to get this one and i'm really really excited that i ended up getting the red one sorry i have to drink still having some issues after surgery unfortunately so cons the one of the, the one of the big cons that I have and sometimes it's kind of hard to get into the menu or maybe it's just because I'm so used to being able to just go in and change my settings without having to go into a memory thing first um, maybe once I get used to that that'll be a little a little bit better um, the other con, I kind of wish that there was some kind of little indentation or something to be able to get the battery door off. Like I said, it's not an issue for me because I do have some nails. Um, so, you know, it's easy for me to get on and off. Battery door holds on very, very well. And again, I do wish that I was able to flip the screen around so that I could actually see it when I'm vaping. No hesitation whatsoever from the time I push the fire button until it actually starts ramping up um, in either power or temp mode. I do have it in temp mode. <laughs> I do have it in temp mode right now. Not an issue. So yeah, that's about it. Um, as you can see, I am actually upstairs in my house. My roommate is going to be gone um, at least tonight, possibly tomorrow too. So the next couple videos, I might be able to do upstairs. Yay! Um, he doesn't always tell me when he's going to be going out for the night. Um, it's kind of hard for me to plan videos sometimes, but he did tell me this time. So I am upstairs. Please ignore this mess behind me. This is his daughter's playroom. <laughs> it's actually like a very formal living room, dining room, but um, yeah, it's her whole playroom, which is I'm totally fine with me because I don't hang out in this room very much anyway. But as you can see, I have tons and tons of beautiful, huge windows. There's another one right across from me, which is why it would be 
awesome to be able to record up here all the time, but I will be working on lighting for down in my little hole <laughs> from now on. Um, but with the surgery, things are kind of pushed behind. And then my laptop decided that it didn't want to charge anymore and I wasn't sure if it was the battery or the cord. So I had to buy a brand new one of both and had them overnighted so that I would be able to put this video out. Um, and well, other things too, but so yeah, it's just been one thing after another, but I am slowly starting to feel a little better um, since the surgery. It's been slower going than I had anticipated. I'm not a very patient person and I'm not a very good patient whatsoever. Um, I'm not one to sit around and just kind of lay around all day long and haven't been able to do a whole lot more other than that just because the one incision is still causing me a lot of problems. But I am on the mend and hope to be almost normal, <laughs> whatever that means, by next week. I think that's about it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay um, up to date on more vaping news and reviews that I'll, I will be doing. And until next time, I hope you have a great day and keep calm and vape on.